all effects takes, back buttons, trigger stops, oh, and a five-year warranty. Snakebite Gamepad Pro. Hey everyone, it's the Phototechie. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is about the Snakebite Gamepad Pro. Disclaimer first, Snakebite did send out these controllers to me for review. They haven't paid me or asked me anything particular to be shown in the video. All the opinions and test results are mine and they don't get to see the video before it's published. Uh, but do bear in mind, I did get the controllers for free. Releasing October 30th in retail stores and Snakebite's website. The price is $79.99 here in UK and the white variant comes with a black and orange braided USB cable and the black color one comes with a black and green braided USB cable. Okay, let's start with the design of the controller. Weighs 218 grams on my scales and uh, based on the standard Xbox layout, the in-hand feel is slightly different, but not a big departure from the standard controller. If you are used to holding the standard controller, you'll be right at home here. The only differences are these sharper sort of edges here and how you're holding the controller where your inside fingers sort of like wrapping around. That's the only difference I felt. Otherwise, very, very comfortable to hold. The design wise, like there is no grippy material at the front, but at the back, they are using this glossy material with laser edge grip um, sort of pattern. Now, at first, this was a bit strange to me because all the other controllers, you know, they have like rough texture. This is very slick and very grippy at the same time. It will take a, like, it took me at least like few hours of gaming to get used to it, especially when your hands warm up, the grip increases. So it's a very sort of like, you know, a different design that they went with. It works, you know, it provides you with the grip. Uh, and um, by the looks of it, I think it's going to be, you know, very long lasting as well. So like no rubber that's going to deteriorate or something. But yeah, it is strange at first. So grip, not an issue whatsoever. In hand feel very comfortable. We do have this module at the front uh, for your 3.5 mil jack. Uh, so there's a button to change from global volume to chat mix, the plus minus buttons, and then a mic mute button as well. So just showing you guys the game per tester results. If you judge by the center position of the sticks, they are like dead center. So that tells me there are some built-in dead zones uh, and this being basically don't have any software support. So whatever is built in there, it's there, it's no, you, you can't disable them. But the good thing is these are very minimal. So even slightest of movement of the stick registers an input. So I really, really like that. And uh, I can assure you like, you know, whilst gaming, I didn't feel like they were hindering or anything, but just make sure you keep your in-game dead zones to zero. When it comes to circularity, you must have seen a lot of tests of these K-Silver and the Gully Kid sticks. Uh, they are like perfectly, uh, you know, calibrated uh, in terms of circularity. What I do like here is um, when you push the maximum, so your left stick maximum forward, you do have even the right one, you have a little bit of a leeway uh, on both sides. This is important in games like Call of Duty, where you dive and you push the stick forward and you press the button to run. When you're pressing that button, if your stick moves a little bit and it's out of that threshold of that maximum, your character won't run. So I have a controller, ROG Raikiri, where this happens to me a lot. I'm pushing it forward, I'm pressing it, it's not running because the Raikiri has 0% circularity error. So bear that in mind. So I like that. The triggers, just to quickly show you, I really, really like what they've done. So these are Hall effects as well. So here I have a full press. And when I engage a trigger stops, auto adjust the maximum dead zone. So yes perfect way of doing it, no software needed whatsoever. Let's quickly check the polling rate now. All right, the X input test, uh, we can see these are four milliseconds, so 250 hertz polling rate. And I believe that's the maximum uh, that's supported by the Xbox anyway. Unfortunately, I have been able to uh, overclock these on my laptop, but I think that's due to my um, issues with the, uh, the secure boot and stuff. Uh, so at this point, I can't tell you if these can be overclocked or not. If I find a solution or something, I'll leave a pinned comment. All right, on to the precision tester. So some interesting stuff going on here. If I just make a circle, so this, you know, the Hall effect sticks are sort of calibrated quite perfectly with a circle. But you see those distinct four edges, they have that slightly squarish sort of thing going on. Now, what happens if I put a precision ring and try to make a circle within the maximum boundaries? Let's just quickly see the shape we are getting. So do you see this, the diamond kind of shape? So it's like we are getting the really good, all like, you know, the four corners input and uh, the diagonals are sort of like this smoothing going on to the diagonals. Now, at first when I noticed this, I was like, okay, how is this going to perform in game? 
it actually performs really good. So snapping to in Call of Duty right and left um, it worked perfectly for me. And it's a sort of a different way of uh, doing it, but it's like with every, you know, I've learned from the G7 SE, you really have to be going to the maximum diagonals to reach that. So something in the potentiometer sticks, the maximum diagonal sort of thing is reached before you, re you know, you, your stick actually hits that. So this is a little bit of a different thing going, but the left, right, uh, and the stuff actually, yeah, I think what they've done here, the calibration, whatever these guys are doing, it performed really well for me in games. So the ABXY buttons are membrane style and um, they protrude out a lot more than the standard Xbox controller. In my review of the gamepad base and RGB, I praised these a lot and I, as I had to use uh, claw grip because, you know, those base models don't have back buttons. I really like the resistance these have and the satisfying press. No wobble there, which I actually I have to say very nice. Same thing goes here, so no problem with the ABXY buttons. The D-pad is a tech switch variant and it has individual input, so it's not connected in the middle, not jointed in the middle. I really like the sharper feeling of these tech switches. I can't find um, anywhere in the, uh, you know, the website or, or anywhere mention of like the life cycle of these tech switches. So these are not micro switches, but they are sharper feeling. So I actually really, really like this. And this is the same in the gamepad base and um, RGB as well. The view and menu and share buttons are clustered together. But what I like is that they are sort of away from the sticks. So if you have control freaks or something on reaching them, you are not accidentally actuating the, you know, the stick. Nice. The Xbox button again is uh, the sharper feeling tack switch. And these volume controls and the chat mix button and mic mute, they are all sharper feeling tack switches. All right, to my favorite bit of this controller, the triggers. I'm not gonna lie, these triggers, the physical design is a little bit different than the standard one. So we have this slope and a sort of a defined edge at the end of the slope. It's landing the fingers on them really, really good. But what's the best thing are these trigger stops. So we have one stage trigger stop that cuts about, I would say 80, 85% of the travel. But the best thing that I found was that stop, it actually has this springiness to it at the end. And this made such a big difference uh, using it, I mean, it made it a bit quieter just to give you guys um, a bit of a sounding here. Now, before this, I would say like the Elite Series 2 has amazing triggers, but that's basically, it's a very harsh sort of stop. Every controller that I have has a very harsh kind of stop uh, with the trigger stops. This is the only one that I've experienced. Now, I don't have any, you know, mouse click trigger controllers, but it's so different, so nice and in like you know in practice playing with it was amazing like i really really enjoyed using these triggers uh, if it didn't have the whole effect sticks i would say the triggers would have been the the star of the uh, of the show but yeah absolutely amazing uh, to use and when you engage the trigger stops because these are whole effect triggers they auto adjust maximum dead zone so perfect perfect trigger system i would say bumpers very nice you can actuate them from anywhere and uh, they're using the same sort of like material uh, as the front shell. So uh, there is no like grippy texture or anything. There's like little bit indentation here, but using them was not a problem whatsoever. Moving from the uh, triggers onto the bumpers. Yeah, very, very good. All right, let's move on to the back button. So we have two and Snakebite has implemented this uh, command slide, they're calling it. So you literally move the slider to whatever face button you want the back button program to. And uh, that's basically is done now. When the control is running, that's what it will be programmed. Unfortunately, the command slide doesn't have the option for D-pad inputs, nor the view and menu buttons. But and also a uh, big thing is there is no space for them to being disabled. So they are always doing something. An option to disable them would have been amazing, and the D-pad ones. But then I guess the gripping of the controller, they don't want these sliders to be too big. So this is what they basically went with. Design of the back buttons themselves, they're kind of out of the way. So they are, you, when you're gripping the controller, they're sort of sitting underneath your middle finger. And to press them, you are either using the dip joint of your finger uh, or you are moving and pressing. So you either, you know, just doing it like this or you are going to move your finger and press them. I'm somebody who likes to use the tip of my finger and I have to say out of the box, I actually thought the resistance of these button was a bit much. 
and I was a little bit worried, but literally like within half an hour, an hour, um, I actually got used to it very easily and uh, I started really liking it. On the left side, because the way my hand is, I can actually use the dip joint and use it there, but on the right side, I've definitely, because I keep jump on the right, I definitely move my finger and press it. No issues whatsoever, because like I said, the resistance is, uh, is you know, is quite decent on the back buttons. There is no accidental actuations. Now, I can see a potential issue with somebody who's not used to back buttons and they get this controller. If they want to ignore them, they can. It's very easily done. But if you want to use them, so out of the box, they might feel like, oh, it's a bit much. But like I said, it doesn't take that long to really like, you know, soften them and, and use them. In practice, using them in Call of Duty was a breeze, absolutely amazing. I had no issues and um, yeah, it's it's a very decent design. But the lack of D-pad input and uh, no option for disable can be a deal breaker for some. Okay, on to the thumbsticks. The physical design is a little bit different than the standard Xbox one. So if you have Xbox control freaks, no chance they're going to fit here. Uh, PS4, PS5 ones, you can actually uh, push these hooks out a little bit and then it does fit. So I was able to do that to one of my control freaks. You do have to use like a pliers or something like that. So bear that in mind, you are kind of, it doesn't damage it, but you just like extended these and then it will fit on. Unfortunately, you have to do that out of the box, it won't fit. Uh, so yeah, there is that. You can use other thumb grips and stuff, but the stick on its own is actually a really good material, is quite grippy and the height is increased a bit. So you might not even, need uh, something like I the whole time I was playing I just put a thumb grip on it and I was just using that uh, use of precision ring is actually good you have enough space uh, for the precision ring and it doesn't restrict it or whatever so yeah that's good now like I showed in the precision tester the response sort of they are these are doing so we have kind of like these squarish corners each end and then the diagonals are smoothed out I actually really like playing Call of Duty with this and um, like the other sticks as well, I did have to reduce the outer dead zone in game. So when I was using the precision rings, I brought them down to 80. Without them, I brought them down to 90. Now that might be due to, so I was reading the specs, the K-Silver sticks have 30 degree maximum sort of travel each direction and the Alps are like 23 degrees. So it might be that, that we are so used to the Alps one and whatever their movement is, it's maybe it's a little bit less. I haven't measured like the complete movement or anything like that, how it's doing, but I just felt that I had to reduce those. But performance wise, I was very happy because there are no options with the, so this is basically what you have. You open the box, you start playing, that's the response curve, that's what you have. I know a lot of games have different, you know, options with their response and things like that. But Snakebite have decided to just give like this one experience and they're trying to tune it to basically be the best. Uh, and uh, as shown in the precision tester, it's a quite different approach. So, but it worked for me uh, with and without the precision rings. Now. It's not exactly like the potentiometer sticks. You will feel a different. Like I wish that I could say that, oh, there's no different. It's amazing. It's not, it's not guys, uh, honestly. Uh, like I said, I'm having to decrease the dead zones and stuff and you will have to find your sensitivity again uh, when you move on to these sticks. But if this technology gets rid of the stick drift, right, the potentiometer stick drift that is, I think personally for me, it's worth getting used to these. I'm trying to play more and more without the precision rings and I'm using uh, the, the Gamepad Pro and the Gamesa G7SE just to basically get used to of these type of sticks. So I'm not relying on precision rings and, uh, and the other controllers as much because I do feel a different when I go back and forth. Uh, you could say that these are more accurate, but years of playing on the other sticks. Uh, with whatever the response curve, you know, how they're performing, yeah, you will feel a little bit of a difference. But in all honesty, my experience with these was good. I actually was able to. Now, it might be due to the, that I have been playing with the G7SE for some time before getting this. So it might be that I sort of got accustomed to know, like, you know, what I had to do. But out of the box when you get it, yeah, you might just, it's a heads up that you might have to change your settings and stuff but it's actually a good experience. So conclusion on guys, would I recommend this controller? Well, let's recap. Amazing trigger system, like I mentioned, absolutely, like, you know, I think they knocked it out of the park. Uh, really, really good to use. Hall effect sticks, a very good 
back button system, especially for me, because I'm just using, if it's a two button, I'm using jump and crouch. So somebody who's, who's just using those features, yeah, it's actually a good design. And like I said, Hall Effect Sticks, you know, licensed Xbox controller. I know it's wired only, but we are now used to of having third party controllers that are all wired on the Xbox. It at $79.99 with a five year warranty is not a bad deal, especially when these are going to be available uh, in your local stores. So hopefully in your market, you know, that's the case. I think Snakebite's website has all the info and everything. I think it's it's a good deal. In all honesty, when I'm jumping onto my Xbox, this is the one that I'm playing the most at right now because I'm actually trying to get used to the Hall Effect Sticks. That's the one I'm trying to spend the most time on. I'm hoping more and more will come out. Some other options, like other manufacturers will see um, that you know people want to be done with the stick drift issue. And also the fact that they're giving us five-year warranty. I haven't seen any info on whatever, you know, what kind of internal testing they've done uh, to decide that number, like how, you know, how many actuations they did of the stakes or the presses of the buttons. I haven't seen any numbers or anything like that. But just feel, knowing that they're giving a five-year warranty is actually, you know, a very confidence uh, a boosting uh, sort of thing for me. And... Um, yeah, so I would advise if you do purchase this, keep a hold of your proof of purchase, right? Uh, so, yeah, it point, it's you know it's showing really good potential, and uh, in my, you know, the amount of time I've played on it, it actually performed really, really good, and uh, of course I'm going to be you know using it extensively, uh, going to see if it you know if I can break it. Like so far, it just performs like absolutely perfectly. And uh, for me personally, if I was in the market for a controller with two back buttons, uh, if you know having four back buttons wasn't a thing, and uh, I'm somebody who's you know not using the D-pad inputs or the back buttons yet, this is a very, very good offering. Uh, one thing I should mention, so the volume that's coming out of the headphone jack, it's not like the Elite Series 2, but it's a lot better than my other third-party controllers. Like my Gambit has issues, I've mentioned in that review, and my Razer Wolverine V2 Chroma has a lot of hiss. So even though it's not as good as the Elite Series 2, which I think is the best one, and I think only the ROG Rykiri I've mentioned before sort of matches uh, that controller, but it's not a bad experience. If you have a, a headset with a lower impedance, like a Nova One X or something like that, it's okay. I only feel like the volume a little bit lower, like I would say 10-15% lower than the Elite Series 2 with the EPOS H6 Pros on this one. So yeah, for Snake Bites like, you know, attempt at a Pro Controller, this is actually a quite decent offering. So Snake Bite did provide me with a discount code. It's like a 10% off. I'll leave it in the description below. If you use that on their website, it basically will send a kickback to me as well. But you don't have to buy this through Snakebite. Like I said, it's releasing in a lot of markets and is supposed to be in the retail stores as well. So that's everything for me, guys, uh, about the GamePad Pro. If I left anything out, if you'd like to know anything more, please do leave me a comment. Uh, and thank you so much for everybody who subscribed. Your support actually means a lot. And um, thanks a lot for watching this video. Uh, hopefully, I'll catch you in one of my other ones. Bye for now.